hey friend, I teach music production at a local college and recently a student came up to me and said, hey, my limiter is not working. And basically the quick answer to this story is that he had it in the wrong order. His effects, effects weren't placed in the proper order, so it wasn't showing that his limiter was actually working. Um, so in the video today, I want to show you three different places uh, inside your DAW to think about when it comes to signal flow and how the order of your effects can impact your mix. Let's jump in. Hey, before we get started, I have a free gift for you. It's a brand new updated version of my five-step guide to recording pro music from your home studio. Basically, I went through the guide, redid all of the content, and updated all of the links, added new content to it. So it's basically a guide that will give you a proven process for recording pro music from your home studio. Uh, to get the guide, just click the link in the description below or visit millermusic.co. Okay, so when it comes to signal flow and effects chains, uh, there is generally no right or wrong answer, but there's just good practices to go by. So this is the first example here. This is the example of my student. Here is a level meter plugin, um, and I have it on my main out, and right now it's going before the limiter. So let's see what it comes in at. So it's coming in about negative nine. Now if I put this meter after the limiter, let's see what it comes in at. So at the loudest part there, it comes in at about negative one dB. So you can see obviously that the level meter is picking up the limiter now. So it's, you can see the limiter is working. Um, this is a really simple example, but I think it's it's good to think about, you know, which order am I putting these effects in? Okay, so I have a drum track pulled up, and I have the Pro EQ going before the compressor. Now I'm going to turn the Pro EQ off and see if you can hear any problems in the drum mix. Now, I don't know if you heard that. Let's let's turn it back. I'm going to turn the Pro EQ back on now. So did you hear that? There was actually this weird, like, whistling sound. Um, uh, I don't know, around 3K. Uh, that was just, I don't know, it was just really kind of a whistling sound. Here, listen again. You hear that? And then I'm going to put the Pro EQ back on and it, it takes it away. So obviously I don't wanna be compressing that like whistle sound. So I wanna remove that and then I wanna compress the drums and you know do whatever I'm gonna do. But that's the first thing in the chain. So that's my go-to kind of for which should you put first, an EQ or a compressor. Okay, so the third example is reverb and where should you put reverb in your effects chain? Uh, basically, I like to put this last. Um, I think that if you have everything before the reverb on, generally it uh, sounds good. However, sometimes there is a problem with reverb and that it tends to build up a little bit of a low end. So I have an acoustic guitar track pulled up and uh, with just reverb at the low end. And let's just see if we have, have any problems in this mix, okay? <laughs> So it's not bad, but it gets a little bit of a a little bit of a low end build up. So what we're going to do is actually add another EQ on at the end of the chain now, and now we're going to cut a little bit of that low end and see if we hear any improvements um, in the guitar sound. <laughs> So you get a little bit more clarity. It's not a huge contrast, but it does take away a little bit of that low end buildup. So when you are putting reverb at the end of your chain, I would just kind of check it to make sure that there's you know, not excessive low end. I recently did a video on effects chains when it comes to ordering them with your guitar pedals. If you are interested in signal flow and want to go deeper with that, just click the link above. Hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to get my free five-step pro home recording guide, and I'll see you in the next video.